That's it, guys. Come on over. Come on, come on, come on. Have a good day. We've got an hour. in the outer ward of the Tower of London. You stood between the two defensive walls. The inner defensive wall is 50 foot high, the outer defensive wall is 22 foot thick. Between the two here, this is known as Mint Street. Here, according to the realm design, I'm minted till the year 1810. Mint 8 stands within what's known <coughs> as the casemates. Casemates means to live within the walls. That door there is number one Mint Street, the doctor's surgery still is today. Next one along is number two, Mint Street. Now it's there a man called Sir Isaac Newton once lived, when he was the master of the Mint. That is where Sir Isaac Newton lived, when he invented gravity. <laughs> gravity is a great British invention. <laughs> Don't you forget that. Over there, very small archway known as a, a Sally Ford apostle. In the old days, that is the royal entrance. Now in those old days, streets of London are rough and dangerous, all too unused, they come by river. Once they're here, they enter the tower through that archway. 29th of May, 1533. Henry VIII was standing just there. Awaiting the arrival of his second wife, Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn was coming here to prepare for her coronation. As Anne Boleyn stepped through that archway, Henry, he stepped forward, he embraced her, kissed her on both cheeks, then he promised to protect her. Hang on. The words he said were this, and I quote, I promise to protect you for the rest of your life. <laughs> Never mentioned his. Three years later she came back, but she came here to die. Therefore, he had fulfilled his obligation. So ladies, give him a break. <laughs> bell Tower, oldest and strongest sound in the defensive wall. Kate's his name that small bell up there in the top. In that belfry is the oldest surviving curfew bell in the city of London. It's been up there since the year 1651. We'd ring that bell as a warning. Gates locks are secured, poor colours are slammed down, and all the battlements there now manned in defence. We also rang it one hour before every execution, and once each night tell the prisoners wandering a licence, get yourselves back to your accommodation. Bell Tower is split into two chambers. The lower chamber once held a man called Sir Thomas More. Must have heard of him, Henry VIII High Chancellor, executed on Tower Hill in 1535. The upper chamber held once a very young and frightened Princess Elizabeth. As she's up there, the order of her half sister, Queen Mary. So, Mary I, Bloody Mary, or Mary Tudor, not Mary Queen of Scots, she was somebody else. Mary is convinced Elizabeth is plotting against her, so she locked her up. Two months, no evidence, Elizabeth was released. Four years later, Mary was dead. Elizabeth came back to the town, I bet you all know she was crowned Queen Elizabeth I. Thomas More spent 15 months in here, but the shortest stay in here was by a man called James Scott, known as the Duke of Monmouth. I know that you know that James Scott, Duke of Monmouth, was the eldest illegitimate son of King Charles II. What you might not know, Charles II had 18 children, but his wife had none of them. They're all illegitimate. He's dead. England does not accept an illegitimate king. So his brother James was crowned James II. But James Scott, Duke of Mama said, hang on, for a very short time, my mother was married to Charles II. Due to the time of Charles over there in exile in Europe. He's keeping out the way of a man called Oliver Cromwell. Now, if that's true, this man's legitimate. He's got a valid claim to the throne. Can't agree, went to war, <coughs> he lost. He lost at the Battle of Sedgemoor in 1685. Now, when he ran from that battlefield, he was a beaten and broken man. We found him, sentenced to death, we locked him in here. But only one night did he spend in here. Then he went to Tower Hill. And on Tower Hill, he got involved in what most people consider the bloodiest execution in Tower history. Waiting for him is a giant of an executioner called Jack Ketch. Now Jack Ketch was by trade a butcher. 
by choice and executioner, but he was drunk 24 hours a day. He paid and he fueled that habit by carrying out executions. These executions very hastily made to order it and said you've got the job. But no one checked his CV. Jack Ketch was a hangman, not an axeman. He'd already made one attempt, but the axe made a right mess of it. He went, well, actually, they said, you said you'd do it, it's tomorrow, get it done. He thought, well, it can't be that hard, I'll try again. He borrows an axe off one of his pals, but it's not his. It's not the right way, it's not balanced to him. James Scott went to the hill, looked him in the eye and said, I'm not paying you. I am legitimate king of England, I will not pay for my execution. Jack Ketch flew into a rage. Not getting paid, not his axe. It went like this. He brought the axe down for the first time, but it landed in Scott's left shoulder. Quite simply, he pulled it out. He tried a second time, it lands between the shoulder blades. Again, pulled it out. Third blow came down, it took the top of Scott's head off. It scalped him. His brain is now open to the baying crowd. They're not paying for his death, they now want to kill the executioner. <laughs> Chuck him over the ropes, they said, we'll rip him to pieces. Now at this point, the sheriff of London feared a riot. The sheriff turned to Ketch and said, Ketch, finish it. At this point, James Scott staggers to his feet. And with bits of blood, plasma, skull and brain dripping down his face, he pleaded, finish it. Jack Ketch, not getting paid, no hope. With Scott nearly once more, the axe fell two more times, five in total, but Scott was still alive. At this point, Ketch looked at the bloody axe in his hand and said, my heart is not with this, and he cast it to the scaffold. Quite simply now, he drew his butcher's knife and he proceeded to hack and saw the remaining bits of bone, sinew, gristle, fat and blood. Kids! Sleep well tonight. <laughs> Head, back from the body. He paled onto a soldier's pike and off it went to London Bridge. However, within one hour that head was back here. And the tower surgeon is now frantically sewing the head and body back together. Why? We've never painted his portrait. <laughs> no cameras, remember? Illegitimate, maybe, but still the eldest son of the King of England. Portrait should be live accession, and it wasn't there. We only realised this just after we hacked his head off. <laughs> very, very quickly, head and body were sewn back together. We dressed him up in all of his finery, a rather large collar put round his neck, and he was laid out. An artist was sewn and said, get it painted within the day because of the smell. Head and body still lie reunited under the floor of the Chapel Royal of St Peter and Binkler. So, remember that cheerful thought. When we get to the chapel, I'll show you the spot today where head and body still lie reunited. Now, talking about beheadings, let's behead him that way. <laughs> they get no better. Crazy wind. Well, now, do as well now something known as water lane. This is called Water Lake, this was the year of 1275, we'd be okay, but the year before you'd be swimming. Right till the year 1274, the rear attempts came straight through here, the laugh against that wall behind you. 1275, door on the side, push through the back, fill the outer wall, face made the trail, span about 18 feet. Now I'm just there, one of the most famous, some call it infamous gates in the world, Traitor's Gate. Built during the reign of the Edith the First, that was usually called the Water Gate, because it stood right against the water. For our cousins from the United States of America, Water Gate, something else we had before you. <laughs> Take a good look at this one. And then the Gate came around the Tudor period, He's and only because the Mountfords were brought into the tower this way. From those, days, from those steps came four queens of England. Anne Boleyn, Catherine Howard, Lady Jane Grey, Princess Elizabeth. Now all those four, three of them, are still here. I'll show you shortly where they're buried in the chapel minus the heads. You now know what happened to Princess Elizabeth. Both of Thomas' Tower, both Jane's Gates and Thomas' Tower. 
Also, no to do anything to get with the first. And up to our Richard Stables, St. Thomas of Beckett, the former constable here. He was murdered on the steps of Canterbury Cathedral. On the order of death of the first, straight down far up, and the second. Pretending that it's the evil palace of Edward I. You want to see it? Take a careful walk up those steps to your right hand side. Up the steps, you go through the palace, you'll cross that bridge into that tower, the Wakefield Tower. Beyond that, the entire south, east, and the north ramparts are open for you. In the Wakefield Tower, King Henry VI was murdered. Stabbed in the back whilst at prayer, 21st of May 1471. To the north, Square, small, infamous, bloody town. That's originally called the Garden Town. A man called William Shakespeare was the first back in the novelist of Tower of Blood. Elizabeth first read the novel, she liked the name, said, Change it. Men, you don't argue with the redhead, they changed it to the Bloody Town. Upper Chamber, 1483, two young boys disappear. Today referred to as the two young princes. Now the young grand Edward V and his younger brother Richard, the Duke of York, aged 12 and 9. Murdered, disappeared, we'll never know. The only fact we know, 191 years after they go, through the archway into the right, you see the great white tower, now you look at it in a minute. Work with the excavation work within that tower, beneath the staircase they found a box. They thought it was treasure. When they opened the box, all they found inside was what was left of two Young boy. <laughs> Do not look away at the side of wicked. <laughs> so good experts in the science said, these are the two young princes. The monarch Charles II agreed, he said take them to Westminster Abbey. Then they still lie to this day in Innocent's Corner, which he named in Leroy. I can't tell you for sure it's a place of murder, but I can a place of imprisonment. Its most famous prisoner was a man called Sir Walter Raleigh. Valley of famous navigator and explorer during the reign of Elizabeth I. He invented Virginia and North Carolina on the other side of the Atlantic. James I hated him. James I, Adam and Walter Raleigh's involved in a plot to put Lady Arabella Stuart on the throne. Raleigh would deny that to his dying day, but the king detested him. Therefore, three times he locked him in there, that total incarceration of 30 years. Now you think you know the name Rally, you do. Rally was the man who brought potatoes and tobacco into it. Those shoulder guys walk through this archway, it's the bloody tower archway. As you go through and look above the edge, you see the second port cullis. That's been up there over 750 years, it weighs two and a half tons, and that one, unlike that one, is still in full working. Right guys, we have a very, very small corridor, please. There's a very small chap coming through. <laughs> Me. Through the archway, up the steps. Right, let's go. 